Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Maine back with another stream. I know, I know the NBA finals are on right now, but neither team that I care about is in. So my interest level is, is way less. Um, I'll watch the game later. I'll watch it on record. I don't need to watch it live. Pretty sure Denver's going to win anyways. Um, what up, Chase? How you doing, bro? But yeah, I want to get a quick video out here, guys. I'm, I'm not going to keep you guys too long. We'll try and keep this one nice and tight around an hour. Um, and then we will uh, have our shitcoin summer second stream uh, this week. And uh, who knows? I did a quick little update video the other night. We'll just keep pushing out the content. Maybe I'll stream some Diablo over on Twitch. You know, just started playing today. I'm annoyed because I'm still trying to play Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Plus trade, make videos, have a girlfriend, have a life, have a dog and play Diablo at the same time. I miss the days when you could just no life a game for days in a row and just have no responsibility and just play video games all the time. So great. Not anymore though. Now we got fucking shit to do apparently. So we got a big week here, guys. We've got CPI tomorrow morning. Okay. So this is going to be one to keep your eyes on here. Um, I always recommend uh, this site to people who might be interested um, in tracking this kind of stuff, Forex Factory, you click on the calendar tab. Anything that's got a red folder is considered like a major high impact item. Um, and then typically the ones you're going to want to focus on have USD under the currency. Obviously, if you live in a certain country or you're trading a Forex pair, like if you're trading GBP uh, USD, right? Or something like that. Well, there's a red item for GBP here, but primarily I'm focusing on what I think might affect crypto, which is generally going to be um, the CPIs, the FOMCs. We have PPI as well, all the PPs and CCs and Is, all the PIs. Um, so quite a big week, retail sales on Thursday. So a lot of stuff going on here. Um, this week. And we also have, you know, a very precarious spot, you could say, for the markets. We've had an absolute ripper of a rally in equities. While crypto has, um, you know, experienced a lot of negativity, some attacks from Gary Gensler in the SEC after Binance and um, things of that nature, um, you know, going after Coinbase. And it's like, okay, you know, if equities are going to pull back, uh, does that mean that, um, you know, crypto is going to eat shit or is crypto going to catch up? Is crypto predicting an equities dump? Who really knows? All I know is the correlation that we generally have had is not there right now because stocks have been up only for a while now. And uh, Bitcoin is, you know, ever since it hit thirty one and a half thousand or whatever the high was there, uh, it's been down, right? Like since the high here, this is a downtrend. This is on the daily, right? That's a downtrend on the daily. So a um, couple levels of interest. I think I've got a pretty straightforward plan. Now, we have a lot of stuff going on this week, right? A lot of stuff going on this week, like I mentioned, with CPI, FOMC, et cetera. So I would be very careful uh, trading this week. There is a very good chance that we get some fuckery. So, you know, thin candles that spike each side of a range, um, you know, moves that go up and then instantly retrace or dump and then get instantly bought back up. Wouldn't be surprised if we see quite a lot of that this week. I'm still going to lay out my trade plans, but whenever these there's these high impact events, um, there's always just risk of, you know, things not moving how you might expect them to move. Um, you know, back when I primarily traded Forex, um, anytime there was a red folder day, dealing with a currency I was looking to trade, I just didn't trade. Just did not trade news events. I find that the disassociation of PA, how it normally acts, is not the association 
PA becomes disassociated oftentimes on these high news driven days. So be careful if you're going to trade, right? Um, but my plans are pretty straightforward. So real quick, shout out to the Prime XBT team. If you guys know me, been watching these streams for a long time, you know I've been rocking with Prime for a while now here, over a year. Uh, they've supported me. Uh, they are what pays for my fancy new equipment that I bought, laptop for the editor, paying the editor himself. Um, all that stuff I'm doing uh, is, is with the help of Prime. So if you want to support me, the best way to do that, sign up to Prime using the link in the description, then input code MAIN50 for a 7% deposit bonus. Um, up to a hundred thousand dollar Mac deposit, uh, and that's the you know deposit some money and start trading. You can trade forex pairs, gold, silver. You can trade the S and P five hundred. So anytime I'm talking about some of those things, and you're like, oh, I can't trade that natural gas. I'm in a trade. You can trade that on Prime, all with crypto, no KYC. So if you want to support me, that is the best way to do it. All right, and I still have some of those twenty percent bonus code. So if you do sign up to Prime and you want to deposit some money, I have a handful of 20% deposit bonus code still. Just DM me and I will send one to you. Okay, so my primary plan here is very simple. So I'm going to start with kind of some top-down analysis here, and then we'll get into my kind of game plan um, for this week. So monthly chart here right the highest of time frames we've had the what we thought or what a lot of us i think assume was the bottoming range here's ftx we're right back in the range trade to the other side break out of the range it is not crazy to come down and retest this range level right there's the confluence here of a monthly bullish order block here, along with this previous kind of range high. So this area, you know, absolutely 25 down to, you know, the low 20s, 21, 22, is an area that we can retest and still maintain bullish market structure, right? If we have a higher low here, and then pot potentially a continuation of this rally. That is definitely possible, right? We can come in and we can absolutely do that. Um, and that's kind of what I see is potentially happening here on the monthly. What we do not want to see, and I'll go down to the weekly for this, right? What we don't want to see is us break back inside the range. So we had our big range. There's your deviation with FTX, top of the range, higher low, higher high. So for this weekly trend to stay intact, right? We're going to want to see a higher low form, right? And where does the fibs line up? Right in that same area on the monthly I was talking about, 22 to, you know, kind of 24, 25. You also have that weekly breaker I've been talking about for ages in this same area. And we just came shy of running it there. So there's a lot of potential support here. Now, anything can happen, right? And I'm sorry my voice is a little hoarse. As you guys saw on Twitter, I was at the UFC um, event. So I was doing some yelling, some screaming. I went out after that. Mo Chains and Castillo were in town hanging out. So we all went out. We partied. We threw down. Um, and uh, my girlfriend's like, I have a headache. So yeah, drink water. Drink water. Always, it's always a solution. Um, yeah, you guys saw that little dust up that happened, that little that little Dostoevsky there, a little Tilly, Tilly come. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not trying to get into some argument with a bunch of random dudes. Um, you know what I mean? Like over some fucking bullshit, I'm sure. But I am in the business of protecting my fucking $12 beers. So that's what you saw me do. I slid in there. I grabbed the booze. I fucking pulled a spin move. You know, like you're playing NFL. I pressed zero. Okay. Press zero. Pressed O. Spun out of there. Okay. And I got out of the fucking way. And I let these idiots pretend to punch each other. Because I'm pretty sure 
Not a single punch was landed by anybody. It was a whole bunch of this, whole bunch of this, bunch of skinny idiots uh, with fake Gucci shirts on and shit is hilarious. Um, you know, I, I do feel like there is kind of a common theme when you have these UFC events. And even when we don't have them here, but they're on TV, everyone um, is like, you know, hopped up. The testosterone levels are high and everyone all of a sudden thinks they're a fucking UFC fighter. And I'm telling you, none of these guys were. Anyway, so that's why my voice is a little hoarse. So lots of potential support here. We don't know if price will hold here, but this is absolutely an area where I am interested in potentially buying the dip if we get some sort of signal that there's bulls here, right? And how are what is that signal? I want to see lows get taken and highs get broken, right? I want to see lows get taken and then highs broken that take those lows. That tells me that there's accumulation going on, right? As opposed to the opposite, if price is taking out highs, and then breaking down, right? Taking out highs and then breaking down. To me, that is a hint that it's distribution as opposed to accumulation, right? So you want to see this at resistance and you want to see this kind of shit, you know, at support. And that's how I, my entire trade strategy works. As you guys know, I'm looking for that, you know, and then I'm using the different time frames to kind of dial in the entry. So the weekly, tons of potential areas of support here. A couple things we need to be aware of on the weekly, right? This was our low and this was our high on the weekly, right? Because this is a swing low that created a new swing high. So as you can see here, Right, we closed below this low last week. So it's a bit of mixed signals because we have a bullish SFP here on the weekly, but technically we have a weekly market structure break to the downside. So typically, right, I'm going to focus on market structure over just SFPs because if you have an SFP in a downtrend, a bullish SFP, it's not always going to give you the reaction you want. This is an SFP. How, how did that work out? right? Whereas in a downtrend, bearish SFP, you get the big reaction, right? In an uptrend, bullish SFP, big reaction. So as much as there's a bullish SFP here, the market structure is bearish in my opinion. So while we might bounce, remember we had a bullish SFP here and we got a little bit of a bounce, but it's just a lower high and now lower. So my entire kind of plan going into this week hinges off of Effectively, we've got a weekly bearish order block here, okay? And if we close below here, that's going to be quite bearish. But for now, this up candle caused us to close below this low. So this is a weekly bearish order block. So just like here, right? Weekly bearish order block, traded up into it, sold off. That's effectively what I'm looking for here, potentially. Trade up into here, sell off. So how do I see this potentially playing out? We'll get a little bit lower time frame now. Using the 12 hour, this big gray block is our weekly bearish order block, okay? You can see here, this white line is the top of the weekly breaker. So that's this level right here. And then these are two key levels that I think, right? So the open, basically of the breaker, the close and the high. Those are what those three levels mark. So instead of having the big gray box there, like I do here, because then it just looks too crazy. Um, I've just got these, these levels um, that I think are relevant relative to the weekly breaker here. Okay. So <clears throat> we've got relatively equal lows here on the 12 hour. We've got relatively equal highs here and here. So I'm looking to fade whatever the move may be. So if we're going to trade up into the weekly OB, right? We're pushing up a little bit right now. Some nice lower wicks. Maybe we're going to get a push up. I'll look to fade a move above this high because this is a 12 hour breaker right here, right? This down move that caused that move up, traded below, rejected. So if we run above these highs into here, and I get a H1 sell trigger, I will take it. 
if we trade above the 12 hour range, here's your 12 hour range. If we trade above the 12 hour range high and I get a sell trigger, we have bearish order block up here and we're within that weekly order block, I will short it. Just like we, this was our 12 hour range, remember before. We traded above it on the one hour and the 30 minute, there is a sell trigger. There's your reaction. So if we get the same type of thing here, up here, that's a short I'm looking for. However, if early in the week, so maybe on CPI tomorrow or FOMC on Wednesday, if we spike below these lows and I get some sort of trigger here because we'll have tagged that weekly breaker, it's right here. So we have these lows right below there. So if we do something like this, spike below the lows, I might try and get in a long and then I would target here and here and then I would look to short. So I know that's a lot of words, but hopefully that's pretty clear. I'm waiting to see what price does. Probably tomorrow we'll get a good idea. If it's gonna go up first, I'm looking to short. If it runs these lows, I'm interested in longs. My short targets would be here and then deeper into the breaker, right? And my long target would be those highs where I'm interested in shorting. So if the long happens first, I'm looking to target this high and this high. If the short happens first, I'm looking for this low, and then maybe we get a reaction. If we don't, then down to here, and then down even lower. Um, okay, so that's very, very straightforward plan for what I'm looking for. Let me know in the chat if that makes sense to you. Chat moving so fast, no one will see that I'm gay. I fucking got you, bro. Ain't nothing slips past me, bro. Now everybody knows, all 300 people watching this know that you, Flux T, are gay. Congratulations. You probably deserve a medal. What are you thinking about the BitBoy's hack? Is it serious? I have no idea. I don't follow BitBoy. Um, what's good, son? How you doing, man? Back in the day when I was tweeting FX, is that what I sound like? Um, what's up, Vahu? Jerry Finkbanks, what's up, bro? The SEC still has the AC-130 kill streak. Yeah, man, it's going for the nuke. It's going for the 25 kill nuke. 25-300 BNCE, then 24,000 bounce, then 22,000 bottom, okay? Um... Let's see here. Yes, my team is the Raptors or whatever team LeBron is playing on. Um, I'm too old to Zelda. They lost me Skyward. Limp Sword came out. I don't know, man. The Switch Zeldas are so good. How do I read all this and translate it to understand it? I don't know, Jane. That's something you're going to have to figure out. Peak uncertainty, BTC going to rip? I don't know. I mean, I fucking hope so. Grow the beard, man. You don't think I would if I could? This is all I got, bro. This is all I got. Hold on. Hold on. Everyone shut up. The flavor saver? The Dust Buster. The Venomous Ethiopian Caterpillar. The Lip Sweater. The Crumb Collector. Come on now. The Purr Stash. Absolutely dusty. Yeah, if I could grow a beard, buddy, I would. I wish I could grow a sweet beard. Um, Maine, are you 604 till you die? Uh, I mean, I'm West Coast. Yeah, I'm not from Toronto. Have you been accumulating? I think you meant accumulate, not acclimating. Um, maybe I am acclimating. Um, spot on red days, not here. Um, I bought a lot of spots sub 20. I bought a ton of spot at like 19.5. Um, 
if we get it deep into the weekly breaker and I get a 12 hour swing long setup, I will buy spot as well. But I have quite a lot of stables right now. Um, what's up, Riverbank? Here's your shout out, bro. What's PA? Price action. What's up, Switch Whisperer? Phantom Assassin. What's good, JDZ? Prime Kiss, you know, Prime XBT, the exchange. Uh, I have, I had Binance, but I'm not allowed on there anymore. I'm Canadian. Prime is a centralized exchange. Can you watch you fight? Are you going to fight me, Jane? You want to go? Equal rights, equal fights, lady. What drawing tool do you use? It's called Epic Pen. Main grabs the booze and exits left. Exactly. Exactly. Gustavo says, this next sexy as fuck. You're goddamn right, Gustavo. You're goddamn fucking right. Maine would beat them up like Madara beating the Shinobi Alliance. That is a fucking Naruto deep cut. And you're fucking goddamn right I would. I would fucking cartoon. Fireball jutsu their ass. Okay. Sounds like everyone's got a good understanding of the, um, my girlfriend does love the stash, the taint tickler. Exactly. Um, the stash is fierce guys. Okay. So plan for Bitcoin straightforward. Sounds like everyone's got a good grasp on it, right? Like right now you're looking at the hourly, right? Kind of looks like shit, doesn't it? Like if you just have just this. SFP, right? SFP, SFP. So if it starts breaking any of these lows, right? With all these SFPs at the high, that makes me believe, right? That this probably is going to swipe down and give us that run of the lows entry before um, potentially going up. We'll wait and see. Um, I'm probably not entering any trades today. I'll wait to see how CPI goes tomorrow. But yeah, it looks like, you know, this kind of looks like a bear flag, right? And it's taking the highs. Hasn't broken any lows yet though, but definitely still want to watch. Okay. So Ethereum, my plan's the exact same as Bitcoin. Ethereum is weaker, in my opinion, than Bitcoin. So if you look at FBTC, Right, This grindy staircase to the upside looks as though it's finally going to you know, kind of dump a little bit. Uh, I mean, like just looking at the four hour here, right? You have this huge long move up for the entire month of May and the start of June. And then in a couple candles, it's taken out half the move. Um, so this looks like it wants to trade lower. So understandably, F looks more bearish. Um, so if the market is going to pull back, F is going to be the higher beta short. If the market is going to go up, in my opinion, F will be the lower beta long. So if we go up, Bitcoin would be favored on longs. If we go down, Ethereum would probably be favored on shorts. Okay, um, that's how I view FBTC. So looking at FUSD, the idea here is the exact same, right? We have this weekly bearish order block in the making here. If we trade up into it, Okay, I'd be looking for shorts. Trade up into, you know, this area, this 12 hour bearish order block. This is where I'd be looking for shorts. Alternatively, right, if Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to roll over, Ethereum's almost at this low already. So it would probably potentially even take out this low. But again, if we're going to long, so if this is going to roll over and we're looking to long, I would rather long Bitcoin. Whereas if we bounce, right, and then the market's going to put in a lower high, I would rather short Ethereum because I think it's weaker of the two. So similar plan to Bitcoin. If we get a bounce up into this area, this is where I'm looking to short. Right now, it looks very heavy. So I'd be looking for it to take out this low and then this low over here. And then if we get some sort of bullish reaction down here, then by all means, I might hop into a long. 
Um, but for now, uh, I'm not positioned in either coin. Okay, dollar has been following our analysis very closely. So this is one of the charts I've had the best read on over the last couple of months. Back in early April, um, you know, when we ran down and took out this low, I said the next target is 104. Um, everyone was giga bearish on the dollar, giga bullish on Bitcoin, right? And I said, this is going to 104. And if that happens, what do you think is going to happen to Bitcoin? It's probably going to go down. So the dollar, April 10th to 24th, it bottomed. Look where Bitcoin is, April 10th to 24th, it topped. So um, when I was calling for the dollar rally, right, that was kind of the sign to be short biased, which I was because we were into resistance on Bitcoin, SFPing support on dollar. So dollar at support, Bitcoin at resistance, that's the perfect confluence. Uh, I'm just annoyed with myself because I got in a short up here. And I shorted Ethereum on this move up, right? This bounce that we had, I shorted Ethereum here. Uh, but I fudded myself out of this short. I said I was going to fade the range high in this whatever stream this was, like back here. I was like, I'm fading the fucking range high move. I'm doing it. And uh, we went up, spiked the range high. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to bid this breaker. So I ended up bidding here, not getting into this short, which was annoying. But. Um, that dollar call has, was accurate, proved to be correct. We came up into that weekly resistance now. And now if you just look on the H12 here, right? We had our high form, broke the low, low, lower high, broke the low, lower low. So if this is the continuation of this trend, right? I think a move up into here and then lower is potentially in the cards, right? So this is the only piece of data to me that is kind of askew because as you can see here, we had that confluence. The dollar was at support. Bitcoin was at resistance. Dollar rallied. Bitcoin sold off. Now we have dollar at resistance and Bitcoin looks weak, but it is near support. So that's where we really want to pay attention because remember, this looked like shit and Bitcoin looked like it was going to the moon. And then what happened? This rallied Bitcoin dump. Now this looks like it's going to the moon. It's a big uptrend here on the higher time frame. And Bitcoin looks like shit, right? It's support. So hopefully this correlation kicks back in, right? And dollar trades lower and can crypto can maybe go up. I mean, it's annoying because for the last handful of weeks, dollars been going down and you've seen equities go up. You've seen gold go up. You've seen Euro USD, GBP USD um, go up. You've seen these sell off. But Bitcoin's just kind of look shitty. So um, what would be favorable for crypto for sure is the dollar to continue going down. That would be the ideal situation for crypto. So in the video update I posted, I don't even know when. Uh, we are trading down here. I said 12 hour SFP. I think we trade up into this 12 hour OB. And let's see if we get a rejection here. So that's where I'm watching on the dollar. Looking at equities, like this is nuts, right? Like you look at these markets on the high time frame, they look strong. Now, all of them are coming into areas where I believe we could be finding resistance. So we have our kind of monthly order block bearish order block that started this down move here. It's a huge candle, right? But what do we have here? We have a monthly high getting run into this order block area, right? So this is time to pay attention. If we run this high, right? And then close below it, that's gonna be, in my opinion, a bearish trigger that I will be looking for shorts lower. This is the monthly chart, right? So take it down to the weekly, Okay, well, let's see if we get a weekly SFP of this high this week, because if we do, then this probably becomes a stop run of here, and then we probably trade back into support, right? Now, that's the worry with Bitcoin is what happens if we close this weekly as an SFP, and then this thing drops 150 points over the next week or two? Does Bitcoin just die, right? I don't know. So a little bit of a tricky spot, but as bullish as equities look, I'm thinking that 
this rally, right? We've had one, two, three, four, five. We're working on our fifth straight green candle. One, two, three, four, five. We had there. Like so far in this bear market, whatever the fuck you want to call this, because it doesn't look like a bear market. We've only had five candles in the same direction once. And then after that, we had a period of sideways and consolidation. Um, one, two, three, four, five sideways, a little bit down, right? So five green weeklies in a row is not super common. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe this closes as green or it's an SFP of this high. And if that's the case, then I think this comes back into support at 4,200 and then we wait and see. Um, so got to wonder what will happen to crypto if that's the case. You know, I, I like if, if equities are going to trade back down 150 points, like I don't see how Bitcoin doesn't, you know, trade back down to like below this low. This is a low that's really interesting to me on Bitcoin. All right, so you have your weekly breaker. We have this, just this little, little itty bitty low here. So this is an area, if we are going to trade deep into this zone, this is an area that I'm watching this low to get run for sure. But yeah, that's what I'm kind of looking at on SPX right now is just, okay, we're closing, we're running above this high right now. Let's see how this weekly candle closes. Because if it's a fade, fake out of this high, we might be looking to fade this, right? Looking at the Dow Jones. You know, very similar. Looks quite bullish. Big weekly SFP here, right? Clearly, we're coming into a key area here, right? On the upside, we have a monthly high right here and another monthly high here. So definitely a little bit higher possible. But then, you know, definitely some resistance. Monthly bearish order block here, right? NQ looks insane. All right? Like, where do you even look here? Here. See how it does with that high. But again, one, two, three, four. Three of which were huge. Green candles. All right? We are coming into resistance, though. So definitely an area to pay attention right? All these markets in a very, very interesting spot. Now gold, right? We got to see, uh, I think what the dollar does, if it's going to continue down, perhaps gold goes up more. Um, but, uh, kind of high time frame, you know, gold's looking a little tired, right? We SFP this high. Okay. Here's your breaker. Right? So we're retesting this. This is a weekly. We had an MSB here on the weekly as well. Right? So I'm, I'm kind of, and this is again where I'm a little bit, not everything is aligned because, you know, this looks kind of toppy, but dollar looks kind of weak. Right? Equities look kind of toppy. Bitcoin is, you know, right at support. So the usual correlations that I'm used to aren't super strong right now. And that's going to happen. There's periods where the correlation is high and there's period where it's not. There's an indicator. So you can look up this thing. It's called the correlation co coefficient. So we can look at the dollar. And so you can see periods where the correlation is strong, right? This would be a positive correlation. And this would be a negative correlation, right? Or an inverse correlation. So it's not always going to be the same way, right? Right? It's not always going to be the exact same um, where the correlation is constant. I do find that the correlation works better um, with your kind of traditional, your traditional stuff. So the dollar and Forex the dollar and gold, right? The dollar and oil um, rather than the dollar and Bitcoin. It does work with the dollar and Bitcoin. And I've shown this and proven this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. I just did it earlier saying, where was Bitcoin? 
uh, oh, this is an old chart. Um, where was Bitcoin in April, right? Versus the dollar, right? So dollar was bottoming and you can see the cursor over on the left side while Bitcoin was topping. So that correlation is valid, right? Look where the dollar topped here in October and look where Bitcoin was, right? Bitcoin bottomed, right? Was the dollar started to break down. Bitcoin started going up. Same thing way back here, right? Dollar starts a huge rally. Bitcoin corrects 50%. So, but here, for example, both the dollar and Bitcoin are going up in this time period. So there's going to be periods where that correlation isn't always that inverse one to one. But yeah, gold kind of looks a little tired, high time frame to me. So something to keep your eye on. I want my levels back that I was looking at. A little bit lower time frame, right? You kind of have an H12 sweep here, potential breaker. So I don't know. Gold rolls over from here. That would make sense to me. Euro, I was kind of expecting a pullback. Didn't get it, right? So I was looking for a move up into here, which we clearly saw. But then I want to see a pullback down to here. So that hasn't happened yet. Um... Could it still happen? Maybe we've now swept the high up here. So maybe it will roll over from here, right? And I'd be confident with dollar going up a little bit more. Um, but the initial analysis was, you know, that H12 sweep that was that sweep that was here was enough. And then we would come down to here. But I'm still watching this range. We've now run the high. So I'd still be interested in longs down here on Euro. Don't really have anything for these. Haven't been really trading them. I took a short here a while ago, um, but it just moved so slow and it's just kind of going sideways. A lot of vault coins look really bad. Um, you know, I posted this on Twitter yesterday. I'm like, okay, BNB, hold on, I gotta let my dog go. P, one sec. Come here, buddy. Here, I'll show you guys the pup. Hold on here. <clears throat> God, my voice is hoarse. Come here. He's getting big now. Sit. He's like almost 40 pounds. Okay. Come here, bud. Come here. All right, you ready? <sighs> Hi, buddy. What do you have to say to the people? <laughs> Good boy, okay? We're going to walk in a bit. Almost done. I'm almost done. Just go lay down for a little bit. Go lay down right there. Right there, buddy. Okay. So, um, yeah. Um, a lot of altcoins look shitty. So there's, this is not something I track. I posted this in Telegram, but um, someone who watches this kind of shit was like, hey, um, there's a huge on-chain liquidation of BNB here. And then some people are like, no, you can't be liquidated or whatever. All I know is this is a key level, right? Like this is basically the floor here. And, you know, if you look at like, uh, You know, FTT, remember when FTT tried to defend 22 or $23, whatever it was? I'm not saying the same thing's happening to Binance. In my opinion, Binance has to be 
too big to fail. Because if Binance goes down, right? Pack it up anyways. Like who gives a fuck? Like we're going to zero. You know what I mean? Or we're going to have a very bad time for a very long time. Binance has to be too big to fail. They have verifiably tens of billions of dollars on chain. It's not proof of reserves, right? But they're, they're, it's their money. They control it. Are they commingling funds? Are they doing shady shit? I wouldn't be surprised, right? But at the end of the day, I don't believe they are insolvent. Like, um, we during the FTX thing, we saw billions of dollars of withdrawal, completely fine from Binance. And if they are insolvent, we're so fucked anyways. But I also didn't think FTX was insolvent. And where's my fucking money? <laughs> so if you're worried about what's going on with Binance, um, there is zero downside to taking your money off the exchange until there's a little bit more clarity about what's going on. Zero downside. I wish I could go back in time and as soon as there were even rumors of FTX, I would have taken my money out of there and then just see. And then if it's fine, I put it back, right? But I didn't. I just kind of said, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, and then when I landed in Dubai, I found out I was much poorer uh, than when I took off. So that was great. And then I had to try and have a good time. Um, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. This coin looks shitty, right? Like where is support if we lose this level? Like where? There's nothing here. The weekly, nothing there. Three day, nothing there. The daily, literally one tiny little area of consolidation, still 50% lower than where we are right now. But on the very high time frames, there's no support until way the fuck down there. So that's scary. I don't know the facts around this um, on-chain liquidation. But um, yeah, got to be something that we're aware of at the very least, right? So this looks bad. Like you look at coins like Sushi. Like this is a multi-month, right, consolidation. That is just broken down. I know, buddy. Right? So this is how long? This is like a year. 336 days breaking down. Right? A lot of these um, tokens. Uh, what's another one? I think this one's already in fucking the, like. So many of these tokens from last cycle. What are, what are, what are more of them? This is not a last cycle token, but. What's like some more last cycle tokens, guys? Um, Axie Infinity. What the fuck was the thing for that? What What are some last cycle tokens? Someone throw some shit out. Link. Again, massive consolidation. Looks like it's breaking down. XRP surprisingly looks stronger than most of the other alts. ARB, new lows. Solana, right? Very key area here. If it loses this, I don't even know where it goes. Negative 100 probably. FTM. Yeah, so a lot of these altcoins look awful, guys. Awful, awful, awful. Okay, like I don't need to draw anything on these things. Like you guys can see, these look bearish, right? Right? So a lot of them look really bad. And then if you look at BTC dominance, it looks like it's about to break out. So even if the market continues to go down, what this chart is telling you is that altcoins are gonna bleed way harder than BTC. And even though altcoins might look cheap in terms of dollars, you're like, well, $15 Solana is cheap because it's going back to 100. Maybe it does, but right now, the way things are looking is Solana BTC looks like shit. 
So if the market goes up, BTC probably goes up more than Solana, right? BTC, a lot of these alts, based on how BTC dominance looks, even though they might start looking cheap in terms of dollars, right? They are likely going to continue to bleed against BTC and then maybe bleed against Ethereum as well. So before you go just punting into an altcoin because it looks cheap relative to last cycle, check it versus Ethereum and Bitcoin first. And that's why my 20 IQ play is just buy Ethereum because Ethereum is going to outperform a lot of last cycle's altcoins. Not all of them. Some of them will outperform Ethereum. And then there will be brand new cycle altcoins that will absolutely outperform Ethereum. But Ethereum is a safe bet, in my opinion, to likely outperform a lot of stuff from the previous cycle, just like Ethereum this last cycle outperformed stuff from 2017, right? 2020 coins, a lot of them are not going to see new all-time highs. A lot of them are going to underperform Ethereum. Almost all of them will underperform the new shit, AI tokens, whatever the new narrative is. So keep that in mind when you're looking to go dumpster diving on alt. I'm not saying that you can't buy coins because you believe in the project, but if the market's going to crash, how things look right now, a lot of these alt coins are going to eat a fucking, what are you doing? He's getting restless. He's getting restless, guys. I'm sorry. A lot of these alt coins can drop way fucking more. So just keep that in mind, okay? Um, Maine is the reincarnation of Chris Cornell. Why is that name familiar? Is he not a lead singer for... Who the fuck is Chris Cornell the lead singer of? Audio Slave Soundgarden. That's what it is. Bring back the Grizzlies. I wish, man. Dope nerd facts. What up, Maine? Your telegram is king. Learn so much. Oh, I'm glad to hear, brother. Make sure you go watch all of my old um, YouTube videos as well. Pump those views up, baby. Pump them the fuck up. LeBron don't play for the Raptors. I'm aware, Jan. Jane, Jan. Jesus Christ. Um, bro, I never sat in on a live stream, bro. I'm geeking. I think that means you're laughing, so I'm glad. Question, do you ever use wave trend indicator? No, I've never heard of it. Got that cop mustache. Just looks like Freddie Mercury from Queen. Well, Bitcoin's below 30K, so me and Freddie Mercury are you know equal parts gay. But I just got less AIDS. Less of less of the HIV. Oh, I wish I was in Super Troopers, bro. What kind of accountant were you? I'm getting a license similar to CPA, specializing in taxation. Am I making a mistake? What was the worst part about your job? Everything. Um, I hated being an accountant. I found it extremely boring. I couldn't relate to any of the people I worked with. I thought they were all fucking dorks. Like on Friday, I'd be like, let's go get some beers, you know? And they're like, oh no, I'm gonna go home and fucking read. Like, fuck you. Um, I think it's a good career, right? You know, my parents were happy when I did it. Um, but I just didn't enjoy the work. I found that I had a really good accounting teacher in university who made it sound really cool. And then when I got into the actual workforce, I was like, this shit is whack. Um, I do think accounting is a very useful skill, especially if you're going to go into business. It's not a bad designation to have. And it has helped me a lot in my life. Um, but I just didn't enjoy being an accountant. I found tax so fucking boring. What's your thoughts on the equity markets? I already covered those, Terpy. Uh, what price do you like Soul at? I mean, if it doesn't hold this level, right? If it doesn't hold here, 14. I posted this level. I said big level for Soul here, you know, and we bounced pretty hard off of it. If it doesn't bounce here, I don't see why it doesn't go to like sub $10. Can I look at render, sir? So render is in a key spot here, right? We're in a nice uptrend, but we've come into high time frame resistance, right? And uh, we're retesting, you know, this 
weekly order block. One thing you notice here, right, is we had consolidation, huge move, pullback, consolidation, huge move. But this made a large higher high, a slightly larger higher high, and now a marginally higher higher high higher high. To me, that just means that the trend is running out of steam a little bit. Like if you throw on the RSI here, you can see we're putting in a bearish divergence here, right? So we have three lower highs on RSI and three higher highs on price. So to me, um, as much as we're at support here, I wouldn't be surprised if this starts to play out. I am not an RSI trader. Um, you know, you gotta look at guys like CBS, cold-blooded chiller for that kind of shit. But how I use PA gives me the same clues of RSI, right? If the moves are getting shorter, if the higher highs are getting more marginal, that to me is the trend losing momentum. So it is at support, but uh, I believe the trend is losing momentum. We are at high time frame resistance, so cautious. Where did you work before trading investing? I was an accountant, I worked in sales, I worked in finance, I worked at the bank, uh, and I started a recruitment company several years ago and I ran that for a while. Was it good, brethren? What's up, Ralph? Missed you, daddy. Thanks, Elijah. What other exchanges do you use? Uh, I use a variety of exchanges, some which I'm allowed to, some which I'm finding ways to circumvent the rules to use. But you should use Prime XBT if you are wanting to support your boy. You don't use crayons anymore. I haven't used crayons in years, bro. I know how to use it. I think there's value in it, but it's not something I really use. I'm purely a price action trader, guys. There is no hidden secrets, right? I share with you guys every week in these streams, I share with you guys my charts, exactly how I mark them up. I tell you exactly how I get into trades, where I enter, where my ideas are wrong. I share it all in these live streams. It's not like if you were to pay me, all of a sudden I would be like, aha, here's a secret indicator I use that gives me all the info. Like it's just price action, baby. Bill Hindman SCC emails come out tomorrow. Oh, interesting. You still have contact with Sam Bankman Freed. I need to get a message to him. If I had contact with him, bro, I would be wherever the fuck he is right now having a conversation with him. Dominic. Dominic's asking some very personal questions. Are you sure you don't work for the government, Dominic? What percentage of your money do you have in dedicated crypto? I'll tell you this because I'm not going to give you the exact financial breakdown uh, of all of my money, because that's ridiculous. But one of the things that I am trying my best to do this next cycle is diversify my money, because most of my income is from trading and investing in crypto and sponsorships related to crypto. Um, that means I have a lot of eggs in one basket. So I wanna spend a lot of time over the next months and years getting money out of crypto, not getting rid of all my crypto, but taking profits and money out of crypto, getting into real estate, more traditional investments, maybe buy businesses that are income producing, things like that. So I wanna diversify, I wanna get wider. I'm starting some businesses, as you guys know, Feed Genie, et cetera. Um, so I wanna just diversify my income so I'm not as reliant on just crypto. Uh, because what happens if crypto gets regulated into the ground? Then what, right? I mean, I can still trade, but the majority of what I do is crypto-centric. My audience is crypto-centric. I primarily trade crypto these days. So I'm trying to diversify and I want to get wide. I want to be unfuckwithable. So it doesn't matter what the government does. Like I just got enough cash flow coming in that shit don't matter. You think BTC can roll down without a test of the H12 high? Sure. Anything can happen. What's up, John? Brandon, just give it to us straight. How over is it this time, buddy? It's so fucking over. I mean, if you want bear porn, just go to my friend Keyboard's Monkeys page and he will give you all the bear porn you can imagine uh, and more. Okay, that's a lot of questions I just answered. Let's take a quick look at Twitch here. Uh, 
Um, do you like the dot project long term? I don't like any project long term other than Bitcoin and Ethereum. I mean, what is your body fat percentage? I couldn't tell you. I weigh about 205 right now. Pretty thick. Definitely don't have abs right now, but I'm pretty fucking strong. Um, how tall are you? I'm 6'2". You have to find the same hit rate for your system in Forex and stock. I actually find it a little bit better. Um, crypto, I'm somewhere in the 40 to 40, the 45 to 50 percent um, strike rate range. Uh, I tend to be over 50 percent in FX, and like gold is probably my best performing asset. And when I used to track my stats religiously, like sometimes I'd be closer to 60 percent on gold. UFC Vancouver was fun. I think it was really cool. There's a Canadian fighter who won, so that was awesome. Other than, you know, a bunch of idiots almost fucking spilling beer all over me and me catching a stray fist, uh, I had a really good time. Main, have you been accumulating any new shit coins or trading macro legacy at all? So I dropped a link in Telegram the other day for Unibot. So a lot of my friends are like shit coin sewer divers um and they're you know buying these new meme toy coins and they might hold them for a few days and then sell them like stuff that's not on centralized exchanges i always found using uniswap very annoying and having to like manage like stuff that didn't show up in metamask always i was like always confused i'd forget about tokens i'd forget to sell them they'd go to zero um but this Unibot thing makes it quite easy to do. It manages it all, like how much are you up? What coins do you have? Buy, sell, et cetera. I'm all from Telegram. So I actually really like it. I haven't really dug into it too much. I bought a couple coins, lost money on them. Um, I bought one and someone like copy traded me. I can't remember what it's, it's called Chick-fil-A coin. And someone like DM me because it was from my public wallet being like Chick-fil-A coin. And it like went to zero immediately. And I sold it for like a 90% loss. So that was fun. Um, but I'm not really a shit coiner. I'm just a monkey. I primarily trade Bitcoin and Ethereum. I will trade some altcoins. I'm in a natural gas trade right now. I trade gold, obviously, as you know, and this is, this is primarily what I trade. What you see here, these altcoins will change, but this is primarily the main assets I trade. I don't, you don't need too many, right? Cause I might get one to two trades on Bitcoin a week, one to two on Ethereum, one to two on Euro right? One to two on some altcoins. All of a sudden, there's a lot of opportunities there in a week and you don't need to be tracking 500 different coins. But uh, I'm not really interested in my whole spiel about how altcoins kind of look iffy, right? I'm not really interested in buying altcoins right now. And I don't know what the new narrative altcoins are going to be yet. Here's a nice little buyback. So maybe we will get that push up to here. I don't know. I mean, what's the move when you're in the premium of a range, but there's a strong uptrend? Well, the premium of the range eventually breaks, right? Like when a range change, when a trend changes, eventually it changes, right? You just need to look. Are, are bullish points of interest, right, being respected, or are bearish ones, right? Are we rejecting from bearish OBs? then it's probably bearish. If we're respecting bullish OBs, it's probably bullish. Also, zoom out. We might be in the premium of a 12-hour bearish range, right? But we might be in the discount of a weekly range, right? So make sure you're checking your higher time frames as well. You personally build spot bags of BTC and F from your trading profit, of course. How much is your typical position size when you trade? What kind of question is that? <laughs> How much money do you make, Gregory? How much money do you make? Um, I, I don't talk about position size. And if you look, I almost never post like amounts of money I've made. I'll post entries to you know show that I'm in the trade, but I very rarely will share position sizing. And the reason I don't do it is because I don't want people to have false expectations of what's realistic. I've been doing this a long time, right? And listen, guys like Keyboard and Gainsey and stuff that just drop, oh, look at this. I made so much money on this trade. Um, 
good for them, right? But I consider myself, you know, I like to think I'm educating a lot of people um, or at least trying to. And the last thing you want to do is get discouraged by seeing, well, Gaines, he made $40,000 on a 2% move, right? And it's like, but I only made $40 and what the fuck? I'm never going to make it and get down on yourself because realistically what Gaines, he does, most people will never do. I mean, he's opening 10, 15, $20 million position sizes. A lot of people will never get there. It doesn't mean you can't make a nice living, make good money trading. Um, but I think it sets false expectations for a lot of people. Um, but I've traded, you know, multi-million dollar positions before. Absolutely. My sweet spot is, in my opinion, 500,000 to a million is kind of the sweet spot. 250, 500, a million. That's kind of where I hang out. Um, I don't have the desire anymore to have a $10 million position open, uh, and seeing the price swing tens of thousands of dollars every few ticks, very stressful. But on average, I risk between one and 5%, um, on any given trade. What's up urban TA? How you doing, bro? Long time. I'm 6'4", 6'2", 204, 32 years old. Bro, we're like twins, except for I'm going to be 33 um, in a month, which is crazy. It's almost my birthday. I'm getting old, man. All right, guys. My dog's starting to go nuts, um, and he needs a walk. So he's literally trying to play tug of war. Like He's put the rope under my foot, and he's just trying to yank it himself. It's so freaking cute, but it is a lot of work. Um, so I think I'm going to take him for a walk here. And then I got to hit the gym still tonight. So I got a lot to do. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope uh, this video is valuable for you guys. Hopefully the game plan here for Bitcoin, pretty clear, right? Looking to fade an up move or potentially buy a sweep of these lows. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'll be back. I'll post some updated charts in Telegram tomorrow morning once cpi happens uh and then hopefully we can get in some trades if i short or long bitcoin i will let you guys know uh likely via telegram because uh, i don't post as much you know trading stuff purely on twitter anymore um so if you're interested in um you know just my charts none of the shit posting and noise best place for that is my telegram if you want to support me guys as usual use the prime xbt link in the description um, if you want to join the trading bot, um, get into the discord and, and tag me or Fantoma to get in. Uh, he's got the squeaky now. Um, if you want to join the Haven link for that in the description as well. Otherwise I'll be back. I think either Wednesday or Thursday with my shitcoin summer, uh, stream. So we'll go over some of these charts that we went over here, right? So we had this one played out pretty accurately. Um, this one as well, right? I had link is kind of this big power of three. I don't know. Did some of these other ones play out or no, but we'll go over these in, um, we'll go over these in, in the video tomorrow. This one looks like it, like it got a little bit of a reaction, right? Ran the low, got the bounce. Um, Pepe looks super weak. Inge was the one that was the most accurate. We got the bounce and then the sell off. So yeah, we'll go over all of these uh, in that Wednesday stream. And if you have shit coins that you want me to look at, that's the place to do it. How do you get in the telegram? It's my pinned tweet. My pinned tweet. He up by six on the nuggets. Oh shit. All right, guys, um, I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. 